Hi, this is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. What I'd like to do today is do a review video on a SOG multi-tool that I received with the Mission 18 Battle Box package. Uh, I like the tool as soon as I got it, but I put it on my belt and used it daily at work for the last six weeks. Uh, rather than just look at a tool, uh, say it's neat, I actually wanted to use it and you know beat on the thing a little bit before I actually formed an honest opinion. So I'll go over the tool first and then I'll do a quick demo of it and then I'll give you my final thoughts. The SOG tool came in a ballistic nylon black sheath, uh, velcro, and it actually had molly attachments on the back. I had never encountered those before. I didn't even know what they were actually. The tool itself, you know it folds up standard uh, multi-tool size, no surprise there. Smooth action, needle nose pliers, wire cutters, this is all pretty much standard equipment as far as multi-tools go. It does have a saw, fairly aggressive saw, a file, of course, and a fine file. There's a large screwdriver tip and all. A pretty nice uh, fine screwdriver tip. tip. Looks maybe like a two and a half, three millimeter. Uh, it's probably just a little bit too large for eyeglasses, but it is a nice size. On the other side, I've got a standard clip blade. Phillips screwdriver, two small flat blades, uh, this would be a cap lifter, this would be a can opener, and then there's also a serrated edge uh, blunt point knife. The blades do lock into place. Uh, the release, the release are two knobs that stick out on either side. Uh, attached to the sheath on the side is a little plastic container that holds uh, driver bits, and these are standard driver bits. That's a quarter inch driver maybe 5 sixteenths, but that fits uh, the standard magnetic bits that you get with uh, cordless drills and such. And how this actually works in the multi-tool, with it in the closed position, if you open it slightly, you can drop the tip into it. Uh, this was the greatest feature, I think. Many times I had uh, didn't have the right tool with me and I was able to because this is a standard item chuck it up into my cordless drill and get the job done quite a bit faster kind of a geared action on it as it opens and closes it is very smooth that is the first thing you notice when you open this is the uh, the way the thing opens. I've handed it to several people, let them use it on small jobs, and I always get the same response. It feels a lot better and a lot different than the standard multi-tools like a Leatherman, uh, which seems to be the industrial standard. So as far as woodsman use of a multi-tool, uh, the key thing you're going to be using is your needle nose pliers. That's going to let you lift hot items out of a fire, uh, manipulate any type of hot tools, any type of uh, cutting of wire that's found in the woods or that you bring with you. Quick example of that, I got some trapper wire out here with me. Uh, this is a number 14 gauge. This is pretty standard wire. This is going to cut this stuff with no problem.
This is a heavier, this is like a number nine gauge wire. This would be what you'd make a, like a snare stand out of. This is significantly harder to cut. And again, it's gonna cut it with no problem. Also, if this was a uh, a stake, a cable stake, you were trying to anchor anchor a trap to uh, the pliers are going to help you quite a bit to attach this. You know, not a real big deal. Doing it to the larger size wire is uh, more of a challenge, barehanded. But it'll do that too. So if this was like a stake, this would let you wrap it around. You'd also be able to bend that like into a J to support a snare. Speaking of snares, this is an unmade snare. This is a uh, uh, 332nd snare cable. This is pretty hard to cut and you see it kind of smashes as it cuts through it. So this is definitely not the right tool for the job. My hands are a little cold here. But you can see it'll do it. That's not too uh, smashed. Here it is again. Kind of chew through it a little bit. And it does distort the cable, but that's not too awful bad. Uh, Multi-tools like this definitely come in handy on the trap line. We've gone over the snare support size wire, the standard uh, 14 gauge wire, cable snares. This is an uh, old uh, swivel off a trap. This is the kind of thing that you have to close and open on a line. This is not what you would want to use for it. You would want to carry a pair of lineman's pliers specifically for this. But if it's all you had, it'll get the job done. I guess it didn't get the job done. Failure. Look at that. Broke the pin. I'm kind of surprised by that. I really am. I was also going to attempt to cut a piece of chain with it. I thought that was going to be difficult. But uh, I didn't think this was going to be that big of a problem. So we know what it can't do. Its limits apparently are just closing up a uh, J hook. You know, this is fairly soft metal. You can do that with linesmen all day long. Uh, that's that's pretty awful, in my opinion. But the blade and everything else is still still completely usable, so we'll just carry on. This 
so God forbid if this was your only knife but if you needed to it'll feather Less than ideal, but it does do the job. Uh, let's see. The saw blade here. Does a pretty good job, actually. did pop it off without snapping. That's definitely a bonus. A small saw like this uh, is very underrated on the, in the woods. It's handy to craft tools, such as if you were making a buck saw and you had you know, a 24 inch saw blade, this would be the saw I would want to make a bigger saw that's actually usable for firewood. I'm gonna take the back of my saw, The back of your multi-tool does an awesome job at, at scraping ferro rods. One of my favorite tools actually that was included in this is an awl. This is a really good awl. It's got a good point to it. I also like to use an awl to scrape. You know, this all is sharp enough where it should be able to fuzz, which it does. Okay, so they all works for that. I brought a scrap of leather out also. So if you were repairing any type of gear, that went through that with like zero effort. That's a pretty good all. So leather, canvas, you know, if you have a gear malfunction, that's when you're looking for a multi-tool. How's it bore through wood? See the lock just failed on me. Uh, I'm holding it clear, so it wasn't a big deal. If that was a knife blade, I'd be in trouble. And you see, the all poked through. It did blow out because I was kind of close to the end. That's a 
pretty good hole. Uh, this is just fat wood, so it's pine, so it's fairly soft stuff. But it went through there like, uh, but no problem. There we go. So other than being broken, it's great. So my final thoughts on the SOG multi-tool. It broke. Uh, end of story. I probably pushed it too hard. I mean, I was putting my full weight onto it as I was trying to bend that J-hook. Um, but still, uh, pliers would never have broken in that situation. Granted, these are never the proper tool. This is always the tool you have to have the time. So these things are going to be forced into situations all the time that they're not really designed for. Um, besides the fact that it broke, uh, the ergonomics on this were not my favorite. The lock on the side that locks the blade into place. These slide up to unlock. So whenever you're using the tool, you've got these four metal protrusions right in your hand digging the entire time. Very, very uncomfortable. Uh, I never used this for extended periods of time carving, so I never really got any hot spots, but you didn't want to have this in your hand for any extended period of time. I did have the lock fail on the awl. When I was using the awl, it did fold up on me. Uh, I was boring through wood at the time, so I was really digging into the thing, and it was no harm, no foul. It just folded up on me, and I opened it up again, and it stayed locked. But if this was the knife blade, you know, obviously you cut yourself. Not good. The one hand stud, uh, the cutout for one hand opening, that's a handy feature. I use this quite often. However, I normally carry a Leatherman, and the Leatherman, I rotate it 180, and I've got my serrated edge on the other side for a one hand stud also. With this, I've got my right thumb opens the, the standard clip blade. My left thumb is what you'd have to use to open the serrated edge. You know, that's another feature that just slows you down. When you're working, you pull a tool out one-handed and you're trying to roll the thing through and get your job done as quickly as possible. Uh, the, the sheath I didn't care for. I didn't care for the, the ballistic nylon sheath. Part of it was my fault. Um, I did not use the molly clips properly. Um, so I had some issues with it flopping around my belt originally, but I did get that resolved. But just the look of the, you know, the black tactical nylon with the little skull on the button, not really what you're trying to go for at all times, especially me. Um, the Velcro instead of a metal snap, I didn't care for at all. I would catch the Velcro on certain things and it would shift to the side. Never lost the tool, never had it fall out, uh, but I definitely prefer a snap over Velcro. Uh, the nylon actually seemed to hold up okay. Uh, leather sheaths I've had for years and they do wear out and they do get really sloppy loose. The nylon seemed to work out over the short term. I just didn't care for the tactical black and the molly was not my favorite. And if I had a snap that didn't have a big skull on it, I would have been happier about that. Uh, also, the, uh, the bit attachments on the side added significant width to the tool on your belt. You know, I've got a lot of stuff on my belt anyway when I'm working, so I don't have a lot of uh, space for extra things. So belt space is a premium, and I didn't really appreciate having that on there. It would catch quite often. So this tool, I mean, it did everything that any light duty work it would accomplish. Uh, slightly bulky, not my favorite on the belt. This would definitely be more suited to like a tackle box. Uh, I would not have this on a trap line as a first choice. I can see why, because I was unable to bend just a simple J-hook. Uh, but for the most part, it does everything it needs to, except for complete and utter failure with the pliers when I put too much pressure on it. It's not designed for that. It's probably not their fault, but I didn't think that was crazy. I mean, I wasn't out there batoning it and slapping it around and beating on it with a hammer. I just put my body weight into it trying to uh, been a piece of soft metal. So on that alone I would have to say 
you know, look elsewhere. But if you did have this tool, uh, it would probably be best served in a glove box, you know, like I said before, a tackle box, something like that. So that's just my opinion on it. I have not looked into the warranty on the SOG to see if it's warranted at all. I assume it would be. Um, but either way, I want a tool that's not going to break, not something that they're going to keep replacing as I continually break it. I am hard on stuff anyway. So don't take my word for it. You know, look around, do some reviews on your own, talk to some people that have them. Maybe other people love these things. But for me, it's, you know, I could do without it. Jamie Boggs, Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.